The younger generation now tells me how tough things are. Give me a break. After essentially clinching the nomination on Tuesday and still getting completely destroyed when it comes to young voters with Bernie Sanders again and again, regardless of who wins the state, Bernie wins young voters by big numbers. Joe Biden is making a late and pathetic attempt at winning over some of those young voters. So watch this video. This is from a speech on Tuesday, um, and it essentially amounts to nothing. Watch. Sanders and his supporters have brought a remarkable passion and tenacity to all of these issues. And together, they have shifted the fundamental conversation in this country. So let me say, especially to the young voters who have been inspired by Senator Sanders, I hear you. I know what's at stake. I know what we have to do. Our goal as a campaign and my goal as a candidate for president is to unify this party and then to unify the nation. All right. He wants to unify the party and unify the nation. How? How is he going to bring over these, these young voters that he will need to defeat Donald Trump? Who knows? He has no plans. This is what these neoliberals do. It's all about language. Oh, I know what I have to do. Oh, I appreciate the work that you've done. And now we need to unify the part. What are you going to do? And this is the thing with Joe Biden. He lies again and again and again. On Sunday, he lied at least five times during the debate. Lied about Social Security, bankruptcy reform, super PACs, and climate change. Biden lies all the time. How can anybody possibly trust him on his word? We have to... For, for anybody, for any Sanders supporter, especially any young voter, to think that they could actually trust Joe Biden on anything, they would have to see some actual concrete results. As in, who's your vice president? Is it Nina Turner? Is it Rashida Tlaib? Is it someone who actually endorsed Bernie Sanders publicly? Because I'm going to guess it's not going to be. It's likely going to be uh, Kamala Harris or somebody else. It's not going to be someone who endorsed Bernie Sanders. So that would be step one. That's just step one. There would also need to be a promise that, and again, promises are nothing, but there would need to be some sort of it, something set in stone that nobody from Wall Street would be in his cabinet. But again, this is a fairy tale. That's not going to happen either. But th those are the steps that would need to be taken. But we know Joe Biden very well which is why we know he's not going to take those steps. So, and on top of all of that, let me re remind you, this was just, uh, this was two years ago, in 2018, January 2018, is when Joe Biden said this. The younger generation now tells me how tough things are. Give me a break. <laughs> no, no, I have no empathy for it. Give me a break, because here's the deal, guys. We decided we were going to change the world, and we did. We did. We finished the civil rights movement to the first stage. The women's movement came to be. So my message is, get involved. <laughs> His message is get involved. His message is get involved. He, he has no empathy for the younger generation, but get, get involved. Well, they got involved. Here's who they voted for. This is just from last night. And again, this is the same in all states. But this is just last night. Illinois. Even though uh, uh, Biden won Illinois, look at the, the generation divide here. 17 to 44-year-olds. So, like, we aren't even just talking about people in their 20s. We're talking 17 to 44. Bernie Sanders won them with 66% to Joe Biden, winning only older voters with 76. Donald Trump will be competing directly with Joe Biden when it comes to older voters. Biden needs some of these people under 45, obviously, to come out and vote for him. Right now, in every single state, they have been with Bernie Sanders. But this is just Illinois. Show, let me show you uh, Florida. Florida, same thing. Bernie Sanders, even though Bernie, won, Bernie lost Florida huge, he still wins younger voters, 18 to 44, with 52%. Uh, Arizona. 71% of 18 to 44-year-olds went with Bernie Sanders. How do you expect Joe Biden to win an election if he can't win people under 45? And uh, 
this is his attempt. <laughs> this was a few days ago. Uh, Biden backs free public university tuition in Olive Branch to progressives. Oh, really? He backed free public university tuition, did he? Actually, when you look into it, no, he did not. Uh, Joe Biden is partially embracing progressives' call for p- free public college tuition, backing a plan to make universities tuition-free for those whose families make less than $125,000 per year. A lot of people may live in families, may, may have parents that make more than that, or, or, or make less than that. But that doesn't mean they can afford to pay for their college. So even if you have, even if you live in a wealthy family, it doesn't guarantee that your parents are giving you that money to go to college. These means-tested programs are ridiculous. Actually, I was going to go into um, why, but Bernie Sanders lays out here, essentially, college right now is as essential as high school is. Sanders responded in a statement on Sunday evening, quote, it's great that Joe Biden is now supporting a position that was in the Democratic platform four years ago, the Vermont senator said. Now we have to go much further. We need to make all public universities, colleges, and trade schools tuition-free for everyone like our high schools are. We need to cancel all student debt, and we need to fund it with a small tax on Wall Street speculation. So this is the other aspect that Joe Biden doesn't touch. Student debt. People are living under mountains of student debt. People well into their 30s, 40s, have student debt that are it's holding them down. They're unable to buy a house or unable to essentially move on in life and, and grow and start a family because they have the student debt on them. Because, again, college and university is as essential now as high school is. So to start off people early in their lives with all of this debt... It's absurd. And the older generations, Joe Biden's generation, barely had to pay anything, if anything, for college. They had it given to them, but then they pull up the ladder when they're up, and they're fine. Pull the ladder up, let everyone else below them, anyone under 45, oh, you're screwed, oh well, we got ours, screw you. I have no empathy for it, no empathy for the young generation, no empathy. Yeah, well, good luck getting the empathy of voters that you need to win. They're not going to come out and vote for you. Showed you that. I want to show you this. (laughs) This is just, I mean, I could do a separate video on this. But this is how Joe Biden's speech ended. So watch this weirdness. Thank you all. Thank you all for listening. Oh, thanks. 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 Okay. (laughs) This is the end of the speech. He doesn't know where the hell he is. All he does is read off a teleprompter. When the teleprompter stops, he stands there like a confused old man. Because he's not well. Whether it's his wife, whether it's his senior advisors around him, they should be held accountable for keeping this campaign going when they know full well that Joe Biden is not mentally there. And you're somehow going to win young voters with this dude? It's crazy. One more tweet here. Yesterday, Sanders supporters were pleading to anyone who would listen to postpone the primaries, and libs were saying that postponing it would be a bad precedent or blocking Biden. And today they're saying that Sanders needs to drop out because people had to go vote in a pandemic. This is what's going on right now. For the past week, progressives, Sanders supporters, or really anybody with a brain, have been saying The primaries should be postponed. It is not safe for people to go out and vote. Regardless of how it affects the election. I'm not even sure it would help Bernie. In fact, I think it may hurt him to delay the primary. But regardless, I don't, that, that wasn't on my mind. That nothing, that has nothing to do with anything. 
The reality is it was not safe to go out and vote. Yet the DNC, Tom Perez, continued pushing this idea out there that, oh, we check with the states. They're, they're completely ready. They're prepared. People can go out and vote. It's fine. It's safe. It wasn't safe. There were crowds of people waiting for hours in the middle of a pandemic with an incredibly contagious, uh, contagious virus. And now that Biden has essentially locked up the nomination. Oh, now, now, well, now we got Bernie. Bernie's got to get out. It's not safe. We can't vote now. Not safe. This is why they were pushing for the primaries to continue the way they were going, because they wanted Biden to lock up the nomination until Bernie uh, had no path forward. It's disgusting. This is the Democratic Party. And I don't look, I said this before. They may not need young voters. There may be enough people over 45 that didn't vote in 2016 that will now vote for Democrats in 2020 to defeat Donald Trump. That may work. But do you really want to risk that? And I guess the answer is yes, they are risking that. Because the Democratic Party, the leadership, would rather Donald Trump win than Bernie Sanders win. They completely shut down the energy that Bernie Sanders had in his campaign. Again and again, the media propaganda, the Democratic leadership, the corporate establishment, again and again, whether it's through super PAC ads, whether it's through uh, coverage on cable news, whatever it is, they continue to undermine the energy that was within the Bernie Sanders campaign. And now they think they can just say some nice words. Oh, you guys did a good job. Pat on the head. Now come vote for us. That's going to work? <laughs> no, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. Um, and look, I'm not going to... I If I was a voter, I would know what to do. I'm being honest with you. I don't know. I'm conflicted internally, which is why I'm not telling people what to do. You make your own decisions. I'm not going to voter shame you. I don't think voter shaming works. Maybe you choose to vote for Biden. Fine. Maybe you don't. Fine. I'm not going to tell you what to do. It's something I have to sit on myself and think about because I honestly don't know the answer. Especially right now, you're seeing, you're actually seeing the Trump administration run to the left of the Democratic leadership in the response to the virus. So right now, Republicans are doing something in, that's brilliant. They're engaging in economic populism, whether it's UBI, whether it's putting a moratorium on, on evictions, um, running to the left of the Democratic Party on, on economics in hopes that that will bring people over. And you know what? It might actually work. It might work for enough people where they will win re-election in the fall. Because the Democratic Party is still on this means-tested crap, this corporate-funded BS, and they think that's going to work. I think it's going to lose them another election.